Okay, everybody, good evening. Get a nice crowd here. Hey, we have plenty more subs, so at halftime, please go get the popcorn and get some more subs out there, okay? Um, listen, I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for, for showing up here tonight. And I especially want to thank uh, Mark and Sarah Lynch. Mark, raise your hand there. Uh, and, uh, You're not going to find two more committed, more loyal patriots than you are with Martin Sarah Lynch. So, and uh, they make this, uh, this chapel available to us almost any time we need to. So we're very appreciative of that. And also, um, I want to thank uh, James Ward. James is running our live stream camera. Raise your hand there, James. <laughs> he paid for your dinner tonight. So, thank you. Afterwards, uh, we, we, had to, we have a few buckets here, and if you feel so inclined uh, to drop a five, ten, twenty, couple hundreds in there, whatever, <laughs> we'd appreciate that. Um, we're all in this cause together. And um, so I've asked Mark if he would open us in a word of prayer. Uh, so, Mark, if you come up and uh, we're about together. Thank y'all. All right, we'll go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, this is your deal. And um, it's not about us, it's all about you. And um, like we've, we've been praying this whole last year, 2020, through a crazy year, we pray for forgiveness of not standing up and speaking out. And we pray that you'll forgive us when we, uh, when we continue to tolerate evil and and we, we've had the wrong people in office and we, we just haven't done a good job and we haven't been involved and that doesn't speak for everybody there's a lot of us that have, haven't been involved and, uh, but we are now and we're tired of it and we're, we're awake we've been awakened to a cause now that we've got to get involved and we've got to fight but we need you. We got to keep you first in everything we do. So we dedicate all of our efforts tonight and every day going forward that we can stand strong and put you first again in this country and have people in office that serve you. We love you and we thank you. We thank you for everybody here tonight. Uh, we're seeing all the same faces. So there's good endurance and perseverance for this cause, and we thank you for that. We need the stamina to stay in this game and keep it going. We want to finish strong in our lives, and we want to, we want to do everything we can to help this great country to get you back first in everything we do and get the right people in office and get rid of the swamp rhino people that are causing just horrible things to happen. We thank you that we have... We haven't reversed Roe v. Wade, but we've passed the heartbeat bill. Yes. We thank you for that. So we're making strides. All of our unalienable rights that you've given us, we want our government to stand strong and enforce laws that protect the rights you gave us so we can stay a moral, awesome society that loves you and loves others. So help us with that and just be with our teachers tonight and speak through them and, and uh, help us to hear and learn and activate and go out and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Debbie Kimmel, Debbie is going to come up and lead us in our pledge. And um, if you're a veteran here, how many veterans do we have here tonight? Okay. Um, if you're a veteran... The new protocol is you are free to do a salute for the flag. It just says to everybody in the room that you're a veteran. Debbie, would you lead us? Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Debbie. Wow, it's good to see this crowd here tonight. Um, how many first-time attendees do we have tonight? Wow, one, two people must be doing that. 
1520, okay, that's great. So, you by now you've heard of us, United Patriots Alliance, and we've got an initiative going with uh, my SCGOP. And uh, so if you're here for the first time tonight, or even if you've been here before, and you have not signed up, if you would go to www.unitedpatriotsalliance.com. Okay, you can do that on your phone. Just write that down, United Patriots with an S, Alliance.com. And on that website, there are two little tabs. I want you to read through everything, but two tabs in particular to pay attention to. The first is the newsletter tab. If you want to get emails from us and some information, click the newsletter, and it'll take you where you fill in your name, your phone number, and your email address. That's really all we need. And it will put you on our, our newsletter list. Also, we have another tab there called Calendar. And on that calendar, it's a conservative calendar, and we list anything and everything that we know about going on with the conservative movement throughout South Carolina and the upstate. So you can go to that conservative calendar. For example, this Saturday, I'm gonna be down in Myrtle Beach teaching uh, a couple hundred people the same stuff we've been teaching here. So go to that calendar. If you got friends in the Myrtle Beach area or can drive in within an hour, it starts at 11 a.m. on Saturday morning at David's Restaurant, uh, right there on the ocean. So, uh, we'll be there, so you can plug your friends in too, okay? Um, so, having said that, so how many in here, uh, also let me see a show of hands, you have signed up and you said you're willing to be an EC. All right, that's good, we've got a good number. We've got several more that are not here tonight. How many have said you were willing to be a delegate in the precinct of York? Great. Okay, so a lot of people, and for, we've got about 20 new people here, so I, I want to just, just, you all have heard this, and many of you have heard this before, but it doesn't hurt to go back to the basics. As a matter of fact, the famous coach of the Green Bay Packers, Vince Lombardi, his team got shellacked in the national championship the year before, so when he showed up at summer camp, he was really PO to the guys. I mean, these big, burly, Pro athletes with lots of rings on their fingers with championships in years past, but they lost the year before. And he pulled up, pulled a football, he held it up in his hand, and he said, gentlemen, this is a football. I mean, he went right back to the very basics of the game. And so I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have power, if you want to take this country back, if we want to keep the MAGA agenda going, Precinct Reorg is our football. It's the basics. And it's not hard to learn, but the establishment makes it hard for us to learn it because they don't want to give us the information, okay? And that's why after uh, some trial and error two years ago, uh, Jeff and Olga, by the way, Jeff, right there, raise your hand, Olga, raise your hand, okay. They, uh, they started this initiative called MySCGOP. I also want you to go, write that down to MySCGOP.com. If you haven't already registered there, that's a very specific registration for this precinct project reorg that we're running with the Republican Party. Now, we've got a lot of party leaders that say, oh, I mean, you know when you're over the target, you get a lot of flack, right? They are livid because we're the grassroots people and we're saying, hey, we're tired of your white establishment, pretty much do nothing attitude, okay, that you're taking. And we're here to say, we think the Republican Party needs to change. And they're screaming and yelling. I've heard from one of the uh, staff members at the SCGOP headquarters that the chairman walks around yelling periodically, I'm not a rhino! <laughs> you know? <laughs> so if you happen to yell at, uh, maybe he is. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't recognize the fact that he's a rhino. Uh, one thing we do know, he's very establishment. And they're trying to count, they're calling us outsiders, they're calling us uh, disingenuous, uh, what else do they say about us? I don't know, there are a lot of things. Um, but we, we are simply, we're Republicans, Mr. McKissick. And we have been trying to be a part of your party for a number of years. And from the local level here in Greenville County, from the Greenville County Chairman, to other chairmen around the state, uh, you have shut us out. We are Trump MAGA agenda supporters, and we're here to say, we're here to stay, and we're not going anywhere. We tried working with them, but 
they won't work with us. They won't give us information. Um, and they're, rightly so, they're upset. They should be. Okay? Because they just rest on the laurels. They rest on the fact that they get big money from Lindsey Graham and on, you know, a lot of other big donors. And they take that money and they spend it against us. And, uh, and Jeff will be talking about that a little more later in his presentation. But um, precinct reorg requires a commitment. You know, our founding fathers, when they were there at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and, and the name that we chose, and, and, and we really went through a lot in choosing the name, and we finally settled on a name. Little did we know how divinely inspired God brought that name about. The words United Patriots Alliance. And those three words mean a lot. The word united, we all understand. United we stand, divided we fall, correct? Ben Franklin said to his fellow founding fathers, gentlemen, we either hang together or we shall surely hang separately because they knew that the King of England was after their eyes. And then the word patriots. Uh, our president is a great patriot. We're great patriots. And I want us to hearken back to the fact that the founding fathers as patriots, they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to one another. Now, that was a lot. And then we're also in an alliance. We're a small group, United Patriots Alliance, but we have allied with over a dozen local other grassroots uh, organizations throughout South Carolina. And by the way, a shout out uh, on Saturday, Horry County, Myrtle Beach area, they're going to uh, start the first uh, chapter outside of the upstate, the Horry County of the United Patriots Alliance. Yeah. So we're excited about that. And um, so we realize that we can't do it alone. And but if, if you've got a, a great group, and if you're a group of uh, you know the right to life people, it's certainly we all all celebrating what the governor signed today. But let me ask you a serious question: Why did it take fifty some years after Roe v. Wade at that time? Why? And it's still not a full personhood bill. I'll take what I can get. We're saving thousands of lives. But why did it take 50 years and the millions of lives of children have been lost? God have mercy upon them because just like slavery was our national sin uh, in a couple of other centuries ago, this is our national sin uh, today. And uh, so, so we're coming together and I'm asking you to make a sacrifice. And here's what your sacrifice is going to be. On Monday night, is Monday night February 22nd? On March 22nd? Is that a Monday or Tuesday? Monday night. Monday night, February 22nd. I'm going to ask you to show up at your local precinct. My March, excuse me, I apologize. March 22nd. March 22nd. March, March, March. March for a number of Christian children. Right? March for the war, right? March 22nd. I'm asking you to take an hour, an hour and a half of your evening and show up at your local precinct. They, the, the local GOP, the county GOP, will be disseminating that information as to where we're going to be meeting. But statutorily, by law, every two years, the Republican Party is required to reorganize itself. That's beautiful. Bring in new blood. Get rid of the old blood. You know, new wood, fresh green wood, get rid of the dead wood. That's what it's all about. And so we are standing up and we're, we're educating you, we're, we're organizing you to let you understand the process because it can be a very intimidating process because they will try to intimidate you. They will keep you in the dark. They will not give you the information that you need. And that's why we're having these meetings. So we're gonna meet for about an hour, hour and a half that evening. And then on April the 13th, uh, we will be having a county convention. That's gonna take two or three hours of your time. And then in May, uh, we don't know the date yet, the state GOP hasn't announced it, but in May we will be having the uh, state convention. And that will take about a half a day of your time. So in total, probably less than 10 hours of your time over the next 90 days. That's all we we're asking of you. And then I'm also asking you to spend approximately 35 to $50. There are fees to attend these conventions because they use those fees to rent the facilities where they hold the conventions. So it's gonna cost you about 50 bucks and about 10 hours of your time. 
And then I'm asking you to find some family members, friends, neighbors, people live across the street from you, anybody that's a MAGA Trump supporter to join with you. You either talk to them and tell them, listen, our country is in a crisis. And if we're ever going to turn things around, we have to start at the grassroots level. And it doesn't get any more grassroots than Precinct 3 or it just doesn't. So that's where we are, okay? And um, <clears throat> we've been working behind the scenes all hours of the day and night. And we've got data coming in. And within the next week, all of those of you who, uh, and we're about four and a half weeks away from Precinct New York. So we've got time, but we're going to be emailing to you a list of the hard R Republican voters in the last primary of 2020. We don't know if the MAGA supporters or not. You just got to have to have a conversation with them. You got to have their name and their address and their phone number. Okay? You can go knock on their door. And Jeff's got to talk to you. You can talk to him about the mapping tonight. Okay. Um, so we, we, we've got some volunteers in here. Where's Scott again? Where's Scott at? All right. Scott's going to be talking about that. These guys volunteered this. This would probably cost us thousands of dollars to get done. But thanks to Scott and, and uh, his group of people, uh, we've got a tool that you're going to have. So we're providing you tools as fast as we can. We'll be getting those names out to you here in the next week, I promise you. And then and you'll have 30 days to start calling and getting your people together. Anybody you talk to, send them to myscgop.com and get them to register there. Because that's the way we're going to communicate to them. Okay? myscgop.com. And so as, as this meeting, as, as time uh, gets closer, uh, I need each of you who have volunteered to be in EC, I need you to commit to bringing a minimum of 10 people to your precinct New York. Okay, that's that's what you signed up for, remember? Okay, I've got to get you to get those 10 people. Now, if they're all family members, that's well and good. You can get 20 or 30, that's fine. You can't have too many. We've never had the problem where we've oversubscribed to the number of precinct delegates we're allowed. Because it's important, and uh, I've been remiss in saying this, we've talked about EC, 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 and that is an important solution. But that EC is also a delegate, and every one of us who attend the precinct New York County Convention and the State Convention, we are all delegates. And by signing up and paying your money, you're a delegate, and you have a right to go vote. You will have a right to vote at the precinct level, and you will have a right to vote at the state level. However, when we go, excuse me, at the county level, at the county level. However, when we go to the state level, we're only allowed out of the hundreds of people that will be at the Greenville County uh, County Convention, we're only allowed to send 79 delegates to the state. But we're also allowed to send 79 alternates as well. So we will be putting together a MAGA list of MAGA supporters. It'll be real right clear, you'll understand what we're putting out. And these are the people that we're going to want you to vote for at the county convention. You know, the establishment of Lionel, they put together their slate, and they'll call it something like the unity slate, okay? And they'll list all the establishment of Lionel's, and they'll tell all their people, only vote for these people. Well, guess what? We're going to tell all of you, only vote for our people. It's fair, right? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. So, um, <laughs> I just wanted to get that information out, let you know. We're going to do a Q&A. Jeff is going to come make a PowerPoint presentation. He's going to move it along a little bit faster tonight because we're going to save some time once the PowerPoint is over. We're going to do a role play. What to expect when you show up at your precinct reorg meeting, okay? Because we, we, we need you to be prepared, all right? Um, and then uh, after the precinct uh, reorg uh, role play, I uh, will do Q&A until I uh, don't want to go home, okay? But um, let me close with this. Um, yesterday, uh, yeah, I'm a big boy. My dad always taught me big boys don't cry. I mean, that's what happened, right? I got hit in the stomach in a little league baseball game. I jumped over and cried. Ten years old. My dad comes out here and wipes the dirt off my butt. He says, get up and run the first base. Big boys don't cry. Well, I ruptured my appendix. I didn't know that until 20 miles later. But 
I, I didn't cry, but yesterday I cried. We lost a great American treasure, yes. my son, yes. my son. Yeah. And um, I started listening to Rush in 1989. And, uh, you know, sometimes I took him for granted. And uh, my boys, uh, they were raised Rush babies, okay? Um, but Rush Limbaugh, he had a great moving voice. And he sat behind that golden VIP microphone, typically five days a week, for over 30 years. And he was a beacon of light. And when the Republican Party lost its way, Rush Limbaugh was there with the light shining. It said, fellas, back to the right side of the road. Back to the right side of the road. And 21 million listeners every week listen to him. And not only did Rush Limbaugh have a great voice, but you know what? Coming up through the years, he helped me find my voice. And he's helped tens of millions of Americans find their voices. His influence is incalculable what he did. And so God, thank you for the gift of Rush Limbaugh. Amen. And so Rush is gone. President Trump is no longer in office. If it is to be, it is up to me. Yes. You and I are the ones that now have to come and we have to stand in the gap. And we have to take this seriously. Okay, life and death are facing us. When you look at the, the current occupant, if he's even, I don't think he's at home in his head, he may be living in the White House. I mean, there's some dangerous things coming our way. Censorship, cancel culture, etc. cetera. Uh, the persecution will come if we do not stand up and stop this. And, you know, somebody said, well, why get involved in preaching New York? And the Republican Party, da, 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 da. Yeah, they've been a big disappointment over the years. A lot. But you know what? When we are leading the Republican Party, we will have a moral voice. We will be able to set the tenor and the tone, and we'll be able to say to our elected officials, we elected you, sir, ma'am, and this is how we expect you to represent your constituents. You're saying one thing out of this side of your mouth, but you're going over to Columbia and you're voting this way. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't take 50 years to get a person put down. Well, we've only got a heart to beat on right now. It shouldn't take that long. We shouldn't have to beg the state for permission to keep and bear arms. It shall not be infringed. It's an unalienable, God-given right. So I'm going to get off my soapbox right now, uh, but I just really want to underscore and say to you, from the bottom of my heart, Jeff and Olga, we thank each and every one of you for participating, for coming, we're going to be doing this here every Thursday night at 6 p.m. until Precinct New York, and then we're going to meet even after Precinct New York, because then we have to get you trained for county convention. So we just take it one step at a time, okay? Um, but so I'm going to I'm going to stop here, and uh, Jeff's going to come up and he's going to take over, and uh, and then we'll do the, the uh, role play, and then we'll ask Q and A. Jeff, thank you. <coughs> Rush was, I was a big fan of Rush, too. I, I was in law school in 1990. I never listened to Rush. You know, I, I liked being in grad school because you had a lot of extra time, and I, I had that free time between noon and three, and it was fantastic. But Rush is a, it's a, it's a tragedy where you've lost him, but, but that's the perfect saying. It is now up to us. It is, it is now up to us to get this done. And let me, we'll go through the agenda. Let me introduce, because I've had this question from a lot of people. Why are we doing this. Why is precinct reorg important? We can talk about it being grassroots. This is a grassroots as, as it can be. We talk about, you know, oh, my, my old days, I used to think uh, I just needed to go to the November elections. And that was a good thing to do. And then, well, you know, you already got your staff of people to decide the Republicans going to win in November. Well, then it's the really important piece is the primary. You know, are we going to pick a conservative Republican or an establishment Republican? So we can decide it right there in the, in the primary. But there's something even more important, and that's what this is right now. It's precinct real. And in the example I was giving to folks earlier today, imagine you've got a legislator. You're upset with your house rep. He, he or she voted for or against the heartbeat bill. That type of stuff. 
Imagine, you know, that house rep has, is representing 10 precincts. Those 10 precincts, imagine if, if we're organized enough here that those 10, the 10 of you that are the ECs for those 10 precincts under that house rep can call that, that house rep to a meeting and say, you know what, I represent my 3,500 voters. These are my nine friends that are also precinct ECs underneath your district. We want you to answer for what you're doing. Because I will tell you, they will lie to you. They will tell you they support this issue. And then they go down there and they will vote the opposite. Preston just said it a second ago. I've seen people, let's say, we've been following this since 2013. My wife and I are highly involved in the private school choice for, for K-12 children with special needs. I have seen legislators sponsor a school choice bill and try to kill it in committee. But they're telling their constituents that they support it by sponsoring it. Or I see the exact same people on the campaign trail saying, I'm all about the children. I'm all about school choice. And I'm like, that's the guy who killed it. Now, it's hard to tell. I mean, they, you know, but what would be nice, imagine, I come and talk to your 10 precinct DCs. Or you have a second amendment person comes and tells you about what, what your house rep is doing. And then y'all go call him to the table. I want to know the other nine ECs in my, in my, my house reps district because I want to call them to the table. And that's what this is about. Individually, we're not going to have any influence over these guys. They are good. They're, poli they're called politicians for a reason. You know, they can tell you one thing and with a straight face and go tell the next person something opposite with a straight face. We need, but, 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 but when you're the EC, you have power. You put that, you know, behind, uh, under your, you know, you write a legislator and you say, I'm the executive committee person for X, Y, Z, precinct, they're going to pop up because they're going to realize, oh, that person actually understands how this process works. I better be a little bit more honest with them. And, oh, my goodness, oh, it's not just one person, it's 10 of them CC'd on that email. And we would like to have a meeting with you when you come home from the, from the state house on Thursday. Or can we get together with you on coffee on, on Saturday morning? That's why this is important. So, this is a short-term, short-run project. You know, it's you know from right now until May. You know, with the with the state. You know, we got the count the county in March, and we got the I'm sorry, the, the precincts in March. We got the county in, in April, and the state in May. But then you're going to have the ability if you if you have a particular cause, this is where you're going to be able to make influence. It's not the ballot box in November. It's a little bit better in June with the June primaries. But this is where it can really happen. So we we put this together. Uh, we've got a quick uh, uh, agenda. I know some of you have seen this before. Uh, I'll try to go through it as quickly as we can. The repetition repetition does uh, does, does help in the learning process. But for those of you that are new, we will put we're going to put this. And let me just tell you where why we did it. It is almost impossible to get information out of the GOP, whether it's your county or the state. They don't want to give us information. It is dumbfounding to me. Either, either they don't trust the citizens of the state to, to, to learn how this process works, or, or in reality, they don't want you to know about it. Because guess what? If me and my 10 friends are already involved in the GOP, and if I don't tell anybody else, me and my 10 friends are gonna, gonna continue to be in power. I'm not gonna, if I'm the, one of the little 10 friends, and I'm not, just so y'all know. <laughs> I'm personally not one of those, those establishments. But that's why they call them establishment. But if everybody knew about it, and another 30 people came in, I would even got to go convince those 30 people that I'm the right person. I can convince my 10 friends, but I don't want to convince the other 30, or the other 300, the other you know, 3 million. I trust the citizens of the state of South Carolina. I think we're good, God-fearing, conservative people. We're just being misled by our leaders. That's, that's what, what the, the emphasis on this is about. But uh, we'll talk about the alliance groups. We've got, this is, a, this is a, a joint movement by a bunch of allied groups. If anything can bring a bunch of conservative groups together, whether it's Second Amendment or school choice or, or life or, or whatever, whatever it might be, it's the fact that the SCGOP has to be purged of the establishment. So we'll show you that. Um, we've got a four and a half minute video where we kind of put together a video that actually shows how the process works. We've got that on our website. If you just go to myscgop.com forward slash video, you'll see this four and a half minute video. You'll see a 12 minute video that Steve Bannon did on February 9th, uh, interviewing a gentleman uh, out of Arizona that's been pushing the precinct reward project for years. He's already seen our video and what we're doing. 
and is endorsed it, and they're all super excited about it, and they're asking, hey, can you, can you roll this out into some other states? So this is literally is what we should be doing all across the country. Amen. Best we can do right now is Greenville County and the state, and then we'll work, work on, on the country. But, but in the final part, and just so you know why this is more important, not just for our county or for our state, it's because it's important for our country. Because guess what? We are an early primary state. The state of South Carolina is where all those Republican presidential candidates are going to come through in 2024. In January of 2024, we're going to have a Republican primary to decide who's going to be the next you know, president of the United States. Who's going to be the person to come in and defeat a, 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 a re-election of Biden or a, a Kamala Harris or whoever it's going to be. But that person is going to be decided by the state of South Carolina. I don't know if you remember, but 2016, I don't think the SCGOP was too helpful to Trump. He overwhelmed them in numbers. That's why I trust the, the, the citizens of the, of the state, because he overwhelmed them in numbers. But you know, we've got to overwhelm with numbers on this precinct reorg, but we will make the decision about who's going to be the president you know, in all likelihood. We've done it every time except with new, new Kings in 2012. But that decision will be made here. And if you look, remember the, the, the Democratic uh, 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 primary this year, it was Joe Biden. He was out. The bottom was before us. Joe Biden was gone until they crowned him king right here. We have Joe Biden because the Democrats in the state of South Carolina crowned him king. So this is more important than just, just for us here locally. Our goal with the website, we want to sign up 5,000 patriots all across the state. We're definitely, we, we sign up 5,000 patriots for this. Connect all of you through the sign up registration process with county leaders, sub leaders. We'll, we, we will be able to take back the, uh, the SCGOP. We've also got county pages. So we've got, uh, the one thing that's very difficult to find, again, is information. You know, they don't, they won't even announce the dates of, of when each county is gonna have an increasing real. Each county is different. We're trying to be a central hub for this information. Number one, to educate you on, on how the process works, but also, you know, where is it gonna be in my county? If I'm in Bamberg, South Carolina, where, when, what day is it? You know, you know, so that's what we're trying to do. So we've got people all across the state sending us information. Uh, we've got Greenville covered, and we, you know, we know that. But I'm telling people, you know, if you're in XYZ, Calhoun County, email me. Tell us. Put it out there, and we'll put it on the website just like that. You can't find it on the SCGOP website. I went to the SCGOP, the, not ours, but the, the state party, two or three weeks ago. I couldn't find a single word about real. This is the most important thing going. Why is there not a single reference to reorg on that website? So they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. So we're going to tell. There is Anderson. Uh, Anderson is now after Monday. We presented uh, this at the Anderson County uh, Republican Party a meeting they had on Monday, and there was an SCGOP person there, and they got it. They got the Anderson dates posted on the website, and they're like, and if you look on it. It says more counties to come. So we're at least pushing them. Competition is good. I mean, we're not, we're Republicans, but we're pushing them with a competitive website to say, you guys need to step it up and you need to tell those South Carolinians about what's going on. So they're putting more information on there. It will have references over to their website. So take, find the information wherever you want. I mean, they, they would love for us to take our stuff down. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll refer you. If they got good information, we'll refer you over there. But they're not doing it. So that's why we're, why we're putting this together. And then we've got some tools to help you find other like-minded MAGA supporters and bring them to, to Precinct Real. First, I'm, uh, part of this presentation I always say is I'm, I'm 53 years old. I've been a good Republican my entire life. I was in the college Republicans at the Citadel. I've never heard of Precinct Real until four years ago. Why is that? because they don't want you to know. And so when I learned about it, and I will tell you how bad it was, and we'll do with the, the role play, the first precinct reorg I went to, you know, they, the establishment wants to tell you what to do, and oh, you need to vote for me, you need to, you know, I've been doing it for years and years. Don't listen to that. Go in there and say, I'm here. I'll, you know, if you're, and you're educated, you won't make the mistake I made four years ago. We voted to, to reappoint the EC in my precinct, and she wasn't even there. So, why do we vote for somebody who didn't even have the time or energy to show up at our precinct real? I didn't know any better. I would never do that again. I don't want you guys making that mistake either. So we've got some, some various things, and then we'll do the question and answer after that. Oh, we can go to the next slide. This is the allied groups. Uh, we're adding more all the time. 
Anderson County Tea Party just happened to be the group that we added uh, most recently. But you know, obviously United Patriots Alliance, uh, you know, Chad Payne down in, uh, in uh, Myrtle Beach with uh, I'm Fired Up, you know, the Lawrence Liberty Site, South Carolina Women for Trump. Um, you know, it's just a bunch of groups. And if anything can pull us together, it is this. If you represent a group, a conservative group, or you want to be added to it, you know, let us know. Reach out to us. If you're committed to this program, or you know some folks that are committed to it, let us know. So we, you know we're, we're just signing up all day. So, next. This is the video. I'll go ahead and play it. It's four and a half minutes. Um, check it out online as well and, and watch the, some of that. But I'll, I'll let the let the place for you. Like it or not, gave us four years of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But now is not the time for despair. The battle has just begun. At the state and national level, we have to fight for and return to traditional values to put America first and support the MAGA agenda. More than ever, South Carolina conservatives need to rally, organize, and take positive action. The time has come to take our country back from the radical left, to purge the establishment elite, and to drain the swamp in our own South Carolina Republican Party. Many of you may or may not know that the leadership of the South Carolina Republican Party is chosen every two years. It is that time again for reorganization, where South Carolina Republicans elect a chairman, party officers, and delegates. To make your voice heard and join a movement to rally with other South Carolina patriots and conservatives, here is how the reorganization process works. There are four levels of party organization, precinct, county, state, and national. By law, here in South Carolina, the precincts meet in March of every other year. The county conventions are in April and the state convention is in May. Every South Carolina Republican Party position is up for grabs. And this is your chance to take our party back. To show you how the process works, let's use my home precinct here in Greenville County as an example. In March, every precinct will hold a reorg meeting. We have 151 precincts in Greenville County. At that precinct reorg meeting, there are three critically important decisions that are chosen. First, a precinct executive committeeman, often called the precinct EC, is chosen. The EC will represent the precinct, serve on our county Republican Party committee, attend formal county party meetings typically every two months, and most importantly, vote on various resolutions and platform positions for the county party. The second county position is a precinct president. The president will fill in and vote in place of the precinct EC at county meetings when the EC cannot attend. And the critically important third position chosen are the county delegates to your county Republican convention held in April. These delegates will elect your county party leadership, and generally, everyone that shows up at the precinct reorg in March can be a county delegate for your county convention in April. At a bare minimum, every MAGA agenda supporter should show up at the precinct reorg, help select MAGA leaders, and sign up to be a delegate for the county convention. My home precinct has 33 delegates we can send to the county convention. But the last precinct reorg we had in 2019 only had five people show up, and thus they were all chosen as delegates. You've probably heard the old saying, decisions are made by those who show up. Now is your opportunity to show up and make a real difference. The critically important delegates from your precinct who are chosen at the March precinct reorg meeting then go on to your county Republican convention in April. There, delegates will elect a county Republican chairman, a county executive committeeman who will serve on the state committee and other officers for the county party. But just as importantly, you will also elect delegates to the state convention. Only people who are elected as county delegates from their precinct are eligible to be elected as state delegates, and there is a limited number per county based on population. My home county of Greenville has 79 delegates and 79 alternates to send to the state convention in May. Anderson, for example, has 33 each, and Lexington has 46 each. Again, the number of delegates per county is based on population. At that state convention in Columbia, those party delegates will choose an all-important state party chairman to lead the party for the next two years. If that state party chairman is Rhino Establishment, the South Carolina Republican Party would be the same, so electing the right chairman is critical. To put it into perspective, there are only slots for 870 delegates and 870 alternates to the state convention. That is a small number of people making a big decision, and you can be a part of it if you just show up. Also, because South Carolina is an early primary state, Republican presidential candidates will begin laying the groundwork for their upcoming runs in 2024, and they look to party leadership and conservative activists like you to get involved in the primary election process. 
Given four years of Biden ahead of us, that makes the 2021 South Carolina precinct reopen process more important than ever. Sign up today with myscgop.com for more information. We think this is the best opportunity to start making a real conservative impact on the South Carolina Republican Party. We'll be sharing more information with you on how to get involved. That is myscgop.com. Sign up today. So that information just by itself is more than the SCGOP has put out in nearly a decade. And that's why we wanted to put it out there. We learned, you know, the first two times I've kind of gone through this precinct rule process, what people are looking for. That will help. It's on there. I know it, it's, it's just a little bit more to, to figure out. But I promise you, it's, it's very simple. And it's really, it's just like, like the video said, just show up. It's all you have to do is show up with these these two or three to go all the way to the county. And I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, to the state, and I highly encourage you to do it. We all watch the stuff on TV. It seems kind of exciting what they do on the, on the national level, the, the, the presidential uh, conventions. You know, the same thing goes down on down at the state, except for, but for the fact we're all going to walk in there with no one that we're voting for, just you know, as opposed to what they did know who they were voting for with the, national, the, pre, the Republican prime, uh, convention in 2016. There was still a fight on the floor at the, at the last moments between Trump and uh, Ted Cruz, but uh, thankfully that all worked out. But, but here's our website. You can go and register. That allows us to get your name, your uh, county, your precinct, and your email, and it puts us into a CRM system so we can link you up. With, you know, we're all here in Minnesota, your Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson, but it, you know, across the state, we want to be able to link people up with, with uh, the different coordinators uh, in each of their regions. Next slide. This is what I mentioned earlier. We have county information. And if you really, I'm a process and procedure guy as a taxpayer CPA, so I like to read documents and see it. We've got all of the documents for Greenville County for the 2019 New York. So if you really want to get technical and deep into the weeds, go check out all, you know, further down. But those are the dates. Any new information as we find out, as we figure out where, where the, as they announce where the, the, the precincts will be meeting, we'll be putting that on that page. So that, that should be a central source, as well as it'll be a link over to the Greenville GOP website for their information. But that's a central source of other information for everyone. Next page. Um, one question people ask a lot is how do I find my precinct? We've got a link for that. It goes to scvotes.org. Now, I know scvotes.org, but most people don't, so we've got a link for that there. All you do is click on that. It'll take you over to, to the first page. You'll put in your county, your first name, last name, your date of birth, and press this button, and this is what comes up. The old days, you have to, you used to have your card. Maybe it's still produced, but I don't really know. But go to this as soon as you can and, and check it. Make sure you're properly registered in the right location and print it out. So I'm in the Timberlake precinct. I'm going to print this out and I'm going to take it to my reorg and I'm going to take an ID because they do require ID here. So you're going to have a, your ID, you're going to show and validate that you're in the right place. Some people forget to change your, their, their polling place. You need to go ahead and do this to make sure you're in the right, the right place. Next slide. Um, if you're looking at being an EC or if you just want to bring some other friends, we've, we've got some different delegate tools to help you find folks. You know, we don't have registration by party here. That's something that the SCGOP has been slow walking for years because, quite frankly, they don't want registration by party. Um, but, and this, we can go into that deeper later, but we've got what's called a hard R list. So what that is, which is we don't have registration by party, we have four-star and three-star voters. A four-star voter is an individual that has voted in four Republican, for the past four Republican primaries. If you voted in four of the past four Republican primaries, you probably like to vote, you're probably a Republican. Three stars are going to be you voted in the past three, uh, three of the past four Republican primaries. So we've got that list for you. We all have limited time, treasure, and talent to sit there. There's 3,500 voters in your precinct. We can probably figure out which ones have ever voted in a Republican primary, but it's probably going to be a 1,500. You don't want to go knock on or call 1,500 folks, but these, this will be the top 100 or 20, you know, 100 or 200 or, or 50. I have actually saw a precinct that must be in a Democratic district, it, the precinct that must be, I think, only have like 20 people for quality. So, so they've got a little bit of work to do. 
But yeah, we'll have that list. We've got it all all ready for Greenville. We're securing it for the rest of the state. But you know, we will email and provide that information. I've asked for the same information from the SCGOP, and they won't give it to us. I've been a, I've been a donor to the SCGOP. What they do with my money? They bought data. They add this to share with me as a good Republican. They won't share it with me. What else do they do with my money? They ran campaign ads against Jonathan Hill and, and two or three other uh, uh, Republicans favoring you know, a more establishment type. So that's what we're upset about. That's what I'm sure you guys are upset about too. But the other thing, I mean, the list is good, but look for houses with flags. That's somebody, I promise you, they're typically not door not for, for candidates, and it's usually a flag as a good Republican household. You got the, the, uh, the star, the, the Texas star. I, every time I see somebody with a Trump shirt or a MAGA hat or a Trump bumper sticker, I go up to them and talk to them. I say, here, have you heard of Precinct Reorder? 99.9% of the time, they've never heard of Precinct Reorder. Yeah, they vote. Yeah, they've been in the other primaries, but they never participated in this process. We need those MAGA people to come out. Trump overtook them and beat them in the, in the South Carolina primary in 2016. We can beat them here if we, if we educate them and get them out there. And the most important one, social media, you know, I'm, not, I'm not real happy with Facebook and Twitter you know, right now either. But you know, there's a lot of us on social media complaining about different things. The example I keep giving, I don't really care what Mark Cuban, is, is, whether he's playing the, the national anthem before his basketball games or not, I mean, I care, but there's nothing I can do about it. He's not going to listen to me. You wouldn't listen to all of us. We can go pick it in front of his house. Nothing's going to change. But you know what? So I say, stop complaining about that. Have you signed up? Can you participate in precinct reorg? If they participate in precinct reorg, you can make a difference. We can keep the doubts matter if you never play a basketball game in South Carolina if we, if we do that. We've also got the generosity of our friend Scott over here. Uh, mapping program that will show you. They uploaded this information into a, a program that they developed above my head and my pay grade at this point in time. But it will map out and show you where all these good Republicans are. And I'll, I'll let Scott introduce it real quick, but that's rolling out this next week. But that's what this is about. Us as volunteers, as grassroots coming together. Preston said it cost a couple thousand bucks. I think the number a lot bigger because I've built a technology company. You know, this is something that we have tools. And we have people volunteering all over the state trying to provide and help us with different things. But I'll, I'll hand this over to Scott for a second. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is um, just a thing we've been working on recently. Um, it's a multi collaboration platform. Uh, so, to begin with, one of the key things that we're looking at is to be able to get the list of hard art contacts to you. Um, so you can access them in a web interface um, and get better information out to you. But yeah, I was I got some materials I'm working on on my end. Um, so we'll have most of the stuff ready next week. Yeah, we should have it next week. Yeah. Thank you very much. But I want you to know, Scott and a lot of other people are stepping out up to do stuff like this to help us. So. This is going to be very exciting. Uh, legislator, politicians use this. Different companies, they'll charge you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And we're getting it through the, the gen generosity of a donor that understands what it's going to take to save this country. And if you remember, a lot of how Trump won in 2016, he knew how to, you know, he had certain technology and not uh, uh, folks that really knew how to work the system well. And that's what we're trying to do as well. Um, next, next slide. Um, this is going to be probably one of the most important things you have. This is going to be your precinct reorg MAGA slate. So if you're going to be at EC, you want to have this, put your name up there as an executive committeeman, find the rest of the people that want to be the president, first vice president. If you all come together as a team, then you go fill up all these delegate slots. As you go and knock on doors or call people or see folks, or as we get people to register for us, with us, we'll, we'll get those names out to you. So there's people you're going to find on your own, and then there's no people that just hear about the website through social media and different things to sign up. This is what you want to do. But you know, if you're in EC, you got three or four of your friends, go take that hard on list and Scott's map, and go knock on some doors on a Saturday and just say, hey, I saw you got a Trump sign outside. Are you as frustrated as I am? Never participated in politics before, and I'm frustrated. Will you sign up and be a delegate with us? Get their name and contact. You certainly can get them to sign up with us, but as long as you've got their name and information, you know, 
Then you'll just follow up with them. March 21st, you know, say, tomorrow's the day, I'm coming, and just, you know, I'll, you know, this is not politics. If you want to have a dinner at your house beforehand or after afterwards, you know, invite, invite all your neighbors over, and everybody on this list gets to come to your party at your house. So this, this will actually show you what the priority is. And when we do the role play later, you know, executive committee almost sounds like, you know, is that an important position? I'd rather be president. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. They'll try to fool you. You want to be the EC, you got to fill this up, and you're going to go in, and this is the only people you're going to vote for. This is going to be your list. This will be the, the list coming out of your precinct. And Preston said bring 10 people. You're maybe bring 30, 36. Fill it up. I mean, when, we, when the video went in there, uh, was up there, we talked about Greenville. There's 469 people came to the Greenville uh, uh, um, County Convention two years ago. So 235 is the majority. If you got a precinct and you bring 33, there's 151 precincts in this county. I mean, imagine. I mean, everybody just in this room brought what, two people, one and a half. That's the majority. And I promise you, there's a bunch here, and we got a whole bunch, bunch of other people out there. So we got the, you know, the people of South Carolina, conservatives, Trump supporting mad America first folks, we got a majority. We just got to get a little bit more guys. And there's one piece of paper of anything that will help you do that. We've also got these con cards up here. You know, how do you start that conversation? I've got, I've got folks, I'm, I'm pushing them to go out and, and uh, take these con cards and just walk, walk around Haywood Mall. Or walk around the uh, the parking lot at Haywood Mall on a weekend. Find anybody with a Trump Trump sticker and just stick one of these on there. There's space where you can actually put your name and contact information. You know, if you're out, out there, right? You know, one of my neighbors handed these out with my name. I didn't know she, she was doing it. <laughs> so I get random calls and I'm like, where are you? You're about it. Uh, we got this bumper sticker. This thing is kind of fun, so we put it out there. Uh, you know, but the emphasis is on draining the swamp. Trump fought the swamp in D.C., but we got a bigger swamp, I can almost assure you, in Columbia. Yeah. Uh, what do you do when you call somebody off of that part on this? We have phone numbers. But what do you do if you go knock? We've got some uh, some various door knocking call call scripts. Make it your own. Uh, this will be on the website. It's not on there today, right now, but it'll be on later later tonight. But uh, you know, you know, make make it your own. I personally, when I talk about Greenville and I'm not going to do it, I'm frustrated obviously with the national stuff and Trump and where we're going from a Biden perspective. But you know what? Being here in Greenville County, I'm frustrated about The same leadership has been on the GOP, the, the county GOP, for four years. Just under two years ago, the city of Greenville, city council, went blue. We were screaming bloody murder. Get out and do something. Oh, we, just, we can't do anything. It's Democrat. I call BS on that. If you lose fighting, I get it. But we're not losing fighting, we're just walking away. And I'm frustrated with that. If you want the leadership position, then take the leadership position and do it. I, I don't want to do this. But nobody else, they're not help those. The establishment is not doing it. They're more excited about the Christmas party here or the Christmas party down at the governor's mansion. And that's why they want to be in leadership. I want to save the country and I want to save Greenville. Now, so, Um, this is a questionnaire. Uh, I'm, I'm president of both on the board of the South Carolina Republican Liberty Caucus. We're a, a national 527 IRS pact. So what we can do is endorse candidates. We can do surveys and all that good stuff. We donate money to candidates. People donate to us and then we can donate out to candidates. We can't coordinate with candidates. But, but one of the things we do for all these politicians is we send them surveys. And we ask them, hey, how do you feel on this issue or that issue? You know, they get done right surveys. We, you know, all, they get all kinds of different surveys from different, different uh, groups. We send one out. But you know what? Who's never got a survey before? As far as I know, I've never heard of it. None of these county chairmen, none of these county ECs that all go to the state level, no, no, nobody has, has asked who these people are. I think they're pretty much all rhinos, but maybe there's some good ones. So we're sending out to the Public Liberty Caucus this survey so that we can find out which counties are good and bad. There will be a lot of people that won't send them back. Then you'll say, well, this is the MAGA person that's running for, for your, your county chairman. This is uh, the current one. 
did not respond, did not respond, did not respond. And we've got some hard questions on here for them. Oh, you got One of the questions deals with this issue right here. We all know about Tom Rice, uh, the congressman out of the Horry County area, voting to impeach Trump. Everybody's all in a tizzy about that because everybody knows about it. What do you not? I mean, in the SCG, if you get the credit, did censure, after much delay and us calling them out about it, did censure Tom Rice. But they didn't do anything with these guys. Our friend of ours ran for, a, for, a, for South Carolina State Senate out of Camden County. The current sitting senator there, U.S. State Senator, was a guy, a gentleman by the name of Ben Shaheen. He ran for governor twice. Uh, we'll use some of the things that he did from the trail anymore because I think we have a few kids here. But Ben Shaheen was probably one of the left, most left and most powerful senators in the state senate. This guy right here, Richie Yao, was a Republican. House rep. He endorsed, he did this little play for you, it's a little 30 second clip. He endorsed Senator Ben Shaheen, a Democrat, uh, about a week before the election because Henry was so close. He, uh, Shaheen spent about $250,000, maybe three hundred dollars plus. Penry spent about thirty dollars in a bunch of shoe leather. She worked her butt off to beat a Democrat, and we got Republicans endorsing her, her opponent. It blew me away. Ditto for the sitting state, at that time, he didn't run for re-election, but the sitting state senator out of Lancaster, just north of Camden, he wrote a written endorsement of Ben Shaheen. Imagine you've been busting your butt to push a conservative uh, agenda. You are, you're the Republican nominee, and you got two of your people you know, down there at the State House that are Republicans endorsing somebody else. That would blow you away. Fortunately, Henry uh, came through and won that race, but only if you go to the next page and play this video real quick, y'all won't understand why we're so frustrated. Senator Vincent Shaheen for having the courage to stand up to big power corporations when they defrauded millions of elected co-op members like me. Thank you for standing up for the people in our community. Could you imagine you busted your butt to run for an office and that's what your, your fellow Republicans? Vincent Shaheen, Democrat. Now, you notice, and you can see him kind of reading the script, so I assume he got it for the Shaheen uh, campaign. Well, if you go to the next page. He was thanking Ben Shaheen for fighting back against Sandy Cooper. Sandy Cooper, you've all heard about it, read about it, it's going to cost the taxpayers $6 billion plus. Taxpayers, $6 billion plus. Well, they got a settlement, $520 million out of Sandy Cooper. What did, what, what did Ben Shaheen get? His, his law firm, eight, eight, eight attorneys there in Camden, got $10.2 million. So you got a Republican endorsing a guy for standing up against, you know, <laughs> You know, Sandy Cooper and his firm got two point two million dollars. I think that's part of the reason. I think that uh, you know we got that information out to people. And that's that's part of the reason that uh, Senator Sukina lost his seat. Next page. We're gonna play this. We do Zoom calls every or every Tuesday at eight p.m. You know we got people across the state. We got people who see it at once and then come back. And it, it's it's a one very collaboratively. We talk about it. This is about a two-minute clip of what we had an individual known to us here in, in Greenville. And it's open. Anybody can come to these Zoom calls. I don't care if you're establishment. I don't care if you're spying on us. I mean, our battle plan is to just inform everybody. I don't care if they know what we're doing. If you try to do this undercover, you're never going to be people undercover. I, I trust the, the state, the people here in the state. So we just tell everybody. We like, come join us. Well, the parliamentarian for the South Carolina, uh, for the Greenville County uh, Republican Party was online. You know, it's a friendly environment. Let me show you what, what happened. everyone to our Zoom trainings. Anyone who wants to drain the swamp in Columbia. On Tuesday, the Greenville GOP establishment parliamentarian was monitoring the call, so we asked him a simple question presented by one of our members on the chat. The question was, what happens if there is a tie between the existing EC and a new MAGA delegate? This was the answer we received. No, Jeff, this is your meeting. Then you need to be able to answer that question if you want to run the party. Uh, not what? 
dude, this is your, you, you know, I was sitting here minding my own business and then you call me out. So, you know, this is your meeting, Jeff. You need to be prepared for this stuff. Al, can I ask very quickly, how what's your role on this call? I am merely an observer. He's observing for the uh, the chairman and others of the establishment. Um, no, I'm, I'm can, here. Can, 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 can I ask this? Can I ask Mr. Rush one more question? How? What do you do? Absolutely, Mr. Jr. Can you ask me anything? Please. What do you do professionally, Al? I'm a lawyer. Civil, civil criminal. Oh, Jr. Oh, Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Jay, I, I doubt you're going to answer it, so I went to Robert's Rules for Dummies. It's a tie vote. The vote is lost. You would have to re-vote. At a later date of the same night, President. Same night. Until there's a majority rule. Excuse me. Yes, Brian, go ahead. Could you state that fellow's name one more time, just so everyone's clear on what we're dealing with? You feel like Mr. Hal Roach? Is that who you're talking about, the lawyer? I don't want an answer that's supposed to lead our car to be. I am an average citizen. I know nothing about politics, but you do drive me to want to see your kind go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for encouraging me, sir. Well, here, here. That's what it takes. Wow. The best part of that is that you don't want to You can hear it in his voice. Yes. He, he did not ask questions. He, you know, I don't know if he was the one that submitted that question or whatnot, but you know, he's striving, he's, he's just dying for information on how he can help his country. That guy's been a Republican, I assume, for his entire life. He just wanted to know the answer. You know, and, and, and the GOP doesn't want you to know. They, they think this is a battle over taking their position. I don't want to leave the party. <laughs> Trust me. You know why I do this? I do this for kids with special needs. I want a chairman that is going to go pound the table and for fight for these children. And the current one is not doing it. The current county people are not doing it. And this type of attitude is not doing it. I don't care. I, if you do your job. I wouldn't be here. Go to your Christmas parties, I don't really care, but fight for these children. That's what infuriates me the most. But you can hear it in that gentleman's voice. That's what I really want you to really hear. You know, we work. I'm not, we're not trying to dox anybody and to throw that out there, but it's a public call. Anybody, you know, it was friendly. Hey, you're the parliamentarian. Show us what the Republican Party is really about. Are y'all helpful or not helpful? I would have never dreamed this would have occurred. But that is what occurred Tuesday night. And people were floored. I personally was floored. Now here's step two. If you want to know how the establishment is fighting back? Step two, and we have now, I'll give you the disclaimer, because I have not heard of the video or the interview with the uh, lieutenant governor down in uh, in Orange County. Someone called me and said they just listened to a, an interview with the lieutenant governor. And I'm, you know, I've, I've got to confirm this, but the, in, the interviewer on the radio show was talking about what we're doing with MySCGOP.com and talking about, hey, you know, I don't even know the interview. You know, this this is spreading viral. This is this is the MAGA movement. That's what it's all about. You know, the uh, interviewer asked asked a couple of questions about what was going on. The comments come back. This get ready for this. You know, we're just some some crazy faction out there. That was the lieutenant. What I told the lieutenant governor said. The lieutenant governor said they weren't even sure, but we were conservatives. <laughs> I handed the lieutenant governor personally one of these bomb cards on February 1st in Greenville County at the Hill. I handed it to her. We've known it for my wife goes to church in the same church she does. Um, the other statement about what we're doing, oh, it's not going anywhere. Do y'all think this is not going anywhere? No. If we can do it, as I said, this is the third one this week, and I think it's going somewhere. So, you know, third one in four days, I think it's going somewhere. It's resonating with the state of you know, these politicians, these establishment Republicans are tone deaf. They were tone deaf to it four years ago with Trump, and they're still tone deaf. And they're trying to, all I've seen what Nikki Haley did, you know, back, up, back off of Trump. No, if Nikki thinks she, if we win this, as I said how important that was, and I should have brought it up earlier, if we win this, Nikki's not running for president. <laughs> Oh, so 
Hopefully Trump will only fire you once. <laughs> Not get the second interview after that. Um, you know, we are taking donations. 100% of everything we do goes to buy more of these palm cars. We've got the bumper stickers. We've got that stuff here for you. Um, we got people, we, you know, people are buying this stuff. You know, y'all can pick it up here too, but we got people buying it across the state. You know, in remote counties. And, you know, it's so much fun to say, hey, this is going to help these folks and get it out to them. Um, this is a QA. I don't know if we'll do the QA right now, but I encourage you to join us on the on Zoom calls. I don't know if there'll be any more SCGOP people on there, but they are welcome. Please join us and tell us that you're that you're that you're not what we think you are. So <laughs> let the people know. But um we're also taking out anybody that wants to volunteer for stuff. We know we've got, we've got a few volunteers here that, that, that have asked and offered to do stuff, and we haven't gotten back to it. We are being flooded, so we need more help. So anything you want to do, if you got a particular skill, Scott was ready to say, hey, we can go ahead and put this technology stuff in. If there's something that you know that you think you can contribute to this, because I think this is pretty important, you know, let us know, and we'll, we'll, we'll bring you in the fold. We've got people volunteering in other counties, be coordinators, team leaders, so we can just, as names come in, we can send that information out to them and, and, and coordinate a little bit better. But we just started this. This is what the SCGOP should be doing. I can tell you the hard work for what we're doing, we win this fight, then we're really going to hone this down because this is never going to happen again. I'm not having and dealing with, we have lost our, our Republican Party in this state. About a decade ago, the chairman position became a paid position. And ever since then, it's just been politicians, you know, paid you know, political consultants coming in and out. We all talk about it, that people go into the legislature or Congress, and then they go out to the lobbying group and back and forth and all that. That's going on right here. It's the swamp is here, and we're going to stop that. The chairman of the board ought to be an individual that has oversight. And if, you know, if we hire, if Drew McKissick is the right person to hire, let the chairman and the folks that run the party decide that. But not every two years we, we elect Drew McKissick because he knew how no way ran against him essentially two years ago, four years ago. He was you know, essentially just given the position because he was a political consultant. Let him go back and be a political consultant. And we, need, you know, we need to get all of those guys out of here too, but that's a, that's a much deeper story. But it all starts here with Precinct New York. So we'll open it to Q&A. Um, I know Preston was talking about we'll do some, uh, some, some, uh, some, um, some role play. But you know, any questions you have, we'll stay here as late as we can or as late as you're willing to stay here. But you know, this is important. Get a couple friends. I mean, I think we need to overwhelm them because as that parliamentarian shows you and as the rules get interpreted different ways, you know, if they're interpreting the rules, they'll, they'll fall in their favor. And since they're the current establishment, they're interpreting the rules. The rules will go against us. So when we go to your precinct, you've got to outnumber them substantially. When we go to the county, we have to outnumber them substantially. And when we go to the state, the state convention in May, we need to outnumber them substantially so they can't play the rules game against this vote. I'll hand it back to Preston. Thank you.